Hi, I'm Derek, HL1ZIX, also known as the Stingy Ham. I'd like to introduce an antenna to you that has made such a tremendous difference in the amount of DX that I've been able to work. It's the Moxon antenna. If you're ready to graduate from a single wire antenna to a beam antenna that's easy to make, you can make a Moxon. A Moxon is a two element beam antenna that's about 70% the size of a full size two element beam. With a Moxon, you have a driven element and a reflector in a rectangle shape, but importantly, the tips of the elements are separated by an exact gap. They're quite simple to make, especially for higher bands. When built perfectly, it's a 50 ohm feed antenna at 1 to 1 SWR. It's also very broad banded, and even though it's a monobander, you might find you can work a second band close to it using your internal tuner. You can build a Moxon in a vertical or a horizontal orientation. A vertical antenna will work really great by the ocean, but a horizontal antenna would work a lot better in the city. I've experimented with a vertical antenna in the city and it's a bit noisy. Building a Moxon is really not much more difficult than building a dipole with the addition of a second wire behind it. The gap is often made using a piece of plastic measured and drilled so that the wires are the proper distance apart. Next time I'll try using extra large zip ties for the gap spacers if I can find them. You don't want this area to be too heavy or the moxin might sag on the ends. Why do I think it should be your first beam antenna? A few simple reasons. It's easy to make and even new hams can build it if they stick to the plan. Also it's the perfect beam antenna for poor hams like me who can't afford a rotator and a tower. Now just like with any antenna, a moxin needs height. I happen to have a five-story building with a flat roof and a six-meter pipe on top of that. That puts my moxin at about 70 feet, the perfect height to be working at for 20 meters in my opinion. You'll probably want your moxin up at least 20 to 30 feet high, otherwise your front to back will suffer. Now here's my main moxin at home. You'll notice that I have it mounted on a steel pipe with clamps and a little bit of Velcro at the top just to hold it when I'm spinning it. I turn it around using a method called Armstrong Rotation. That means I use my own body to turn it, my own arms, not a rotator. That saves me a lot of money. Now in the morning time I'll spin it towards 20 or 30 degrees towards the United States and work that way. In the afternoon I can turn it towards the east southeast and work New Zealand or Australia and maybe even long path all the way around the earth to Europe. Then as dusk comes, I can spin it around short path towards Europe or the Middle East and work that way as well into the evening. Having a moxin means you have a nice 110 degree path with which you can work. And that's really nice with an Armstrong rotator type method because you don't have to spin it that much. Okay, here we are at the moxinantennaproject.com. And uh, you can see that we have uh, lots of links here, background, participants, etc. And we have a photo of the gentleman who developed the Moxon, Les Moxon. Um, if you click on the construction link here, you can go and see a link to the Moxon Rectangle Generator Program, which you can use to generate your Moxon and create the correct sizes. Also, you see lots of sample construction information, uh, details on how to make brackets, materials, uh, whatnot else. Um, I'm going to open up my own uh, Moxon Rectangle Generator Program, uh, and uh, we'll take a look at the numbers that we come up with for a 20 meter uh, moxin here. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the frequency of 14.2 megahertz and I'll change the wire size to 16 AWG because that's a good uh, size for me. We have units we can select. We can put it in feet, inches, meters, or millimeters. We can use EasyNEC or NEC to generate a model if we want. And um, anyway, there are a variety of ways that we can set this up uh, to our own uh, pleasing. So let's go ahead and now take a look at the pieces of a moxin. We have a front and a back uh, element. The front element is nothing more than a dipole with a feed point in the middle. It's A plus B plus B. So you have to add those together and I'm gonna open up the calculator program here. And uh, we will go ahead and add A, which is uh, 25.280 feet. And to that, we're going to add B twice. So 3.88 plus 3.88 again. And uh, we will get the correct size of our driven element, which is 33.04 feet. 
So it's just like making a dipole, no different, and you're halfway done with your moxin, essentially, uh, with the elements anyway. So let's go ahead and figure the reflector coming up next. Uh, the reflector is going to be a single element wire that has uh, nothing else to it. Uh, very, very simple. And uh, oh, by the way, here you can see C is the gap in between. The gap is letter C, and that is a critical distance. So you have to make sure that's correct and use a correct spacer. So here's our reflector now. We're going to go ahead and add A again, plus D plus D this time to create our reflector size. So 25.280 for A, plus D, which is 4.68. Uh, and uh, we do that twice, of course, so that we get the full length of the dipole. They're 4.68, and we have 34.64. Actually, not a dipole. I meant to say reflector. So there we are. There is the reflector. It is 34.64. Simple to make. If you can cut those, if you can create a dipole, and you can create a reflector, and you can create a spacer that has this exact space in between, uh, there you go. You know how to make a moxin. Uh, it's, it's very simple. Uh, and you just follow the plans for where the bend points are as well to make the rectangle. So uh, that's it. Really, really quite simple to make a moxin antenna. Now, uh, you can notice how uh, if we add a different type of wire to this, now this is very, very important. The Moxon rectangle generator uses bare wire. So I'm going to open up some wire here. This is speaker wire, and I made my first Moxon with this. I don't know that I recommend it, but it's what I had on hand. And you'll see that if your wire's PVC insulation is thick, set your Mox Gen target frequency 5% higher. Having uh, PVC plastic on the wire makes it seem electrically longer and that will change the velocity factor of the wire and so the wire will seem longer than it actually is in terms of length and you will need to change the frequency of the input that what you input for the frequency in the MOX gen formula. So basically as you can see in my example uh, if you have 14.2 you need to take it times 1.05 or 5% higher. Uh, that will make a frequency of 14.910. So here we are again, 14.2 times 1.05, that's 5% more, equals 14.910. And that means the moxin will actually be created at a higher frequency. But because this PVC coated wire makes it seem electrically longer, it will seem, uh, it will actually make it lower and it will balance out. So basically we type in 14.910 and it will change the dimension sizes. You can watch the dimension of A here. Watch it change from 25.280 to 24.072 and all the other dimensions changed as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, so if you build the Moxon at 14.910 and you have PVC coated wire with a very thick PVC coating like that, like speaker wire has, it will come out to be about 14.2 uh, where you want it to be one to one. So uh, it's off about uh, 700 kilohertz there. So uh, it does make that much of a difference. Uh, so if you build with a wire with PVC coating, keep that in mind. Now here's a wire with a thinner PVC coating on it, and it's not a 16 gauge wire, but I just wanted to show you about the thickness of what I'm calling a thinner PVC coating. If your wire's PVC insulation is thin, set your MOX gen target frequency 2.5% higher. 14.2 times 1.025 equals a frequency of 14.555. So if we type that in there, 14.555, and we calculate that out, you can see the numbers change, and there it is. So having thinner PVC on it will change it about that much, and you'll end up right at about 14.2. Uh, which is roughly where you want to be. And I know that just based on experience, roughly. I'm not using any scientific measurement other than my own experience with wires of this type. So hopefully that will get you closer. And of course, you can go ahead and go to the ends of the elements and you can fold down a little bit at the ends uh, to, to make it longer or shorter uh, so that your wire turns out to be correct. So anyway, always remember to account for the difference in PVC insulation thickness when you're figuring 
uh, your wire length on your moxin. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a moxin I built and I put up on the roof at work. And um, this is a very simple build. Uh, you can see I used four points here uh, and I have the spacer in there. Um, but what I did that's a little different here and I don't recommend is I added the feed point on a fifth post here. And uh, at the time I, I, I didn't really know how to do it, but I've since learned a much better way of doing this. And I'm going to pop up a graphic to show you how you can build a moxin like this and have it balanced in the center, just like that. Um, anyway, this is a great way to build a wire moxin and save yourself uh, both uh, the, the need for another point or two to uh, add to a post. And also, I think it adds a little bit more stability and it would be much better for a field day, for example. So you can build a moxin that way. Very, very useful way to do it. And uh, I was quite impressed when I saw that. Now this moxin was built uh, with some plastic, very thin clear coat plastic pieces for the gap and that worked out very well. However, I'd like to show you an example next of a poor design. This was my first moxin and I used a plastic pipe uh, to separate the gap and that turned out to be too heavy. And that was a problem because uh, the ends of the moxin sag a bit and that can hurt the front to back and that's not good. You can see I just drilled two holes here for the wire to pass through and then another third hole where the wire tip kind of goes into and then I taped it down tight with, tight with some electrical tape. And that created the gap from here to here as you can see. And uh, that works but not well because it adds too much weight to the ends and you want to use a very light, lightweight material uh, for example, uh, zip ties can work really well. And here's a shot of what the moxin looks like. And keep in mind, this is really a piece of junk, I know. Uh, I'm almost embarrassed to show you, but this thing has been up for a year and a half. It's made of PVC pipe, electrical tape, and four crappie poles that cost me about $10 each here in Korea. And uh, they are electrical taped to a PVC frame here. Uh, and uh, the wires are run across that, and uh, that's it. I did add a piece of aluminum to the middle to give it some strength, uh, and uh, there are some PVC tees here, here, and here, uh, but uh, that's, that's it. That's the construction of this frame I made, and I've made X frames before, but I wanted to uh, make this style of frame. And uh, here's a close-up look at the ballon. You don't need a ballon, as I've mentioned, but I do prefer to have one. And that's one of the reasons why I made this frame style. If you make a, uh, if you make uh, the the lighter X frame, then you may not be able to uh, get away with a ballon, or you might have to do it differently. But this was the first way I built it, and it worked out very, very well. Actually, uh, I was very, very happy with how it turned out. Uh, even though it's quite ugly. Like I said, it's been up a year and a half and it's done a wonderful, wonderful job. Tell it's uh, been a tremendous India antenna. I've run many pileups into Europe with it at about 5,000 plus miles. So uh, it's really worked great for me. So you'll see hams argue online about long wire versus off-center fed dipole versus the G5RV versus the regular dipole. Which one's better? Well, I used to get into those arguments too, until I tried my first two element beam. 5 dB of gain, that's enough to pull the signals out of the dirt that you aren't even hearing on those other antennas and make a contact. So the question is, what's stopping you from building a moxin?